Welcome to the Backyard Gym Shed. Hey guys, this is Coop from Garage Gym Reviews, and today I'm gonna show you how I built a budget gym shed in the back of my yard. Why? Because I wanna show you that you can put a gym anywhere. Okay, to start off, I wanna talk about the actual shed itself. This is a 16 by 20 shed. I got this from a company called Dirksen. I don't think that really matters because they're pretty much all the same thing. What I would say is look for a what they call an LP smart side siding. It's something that I have on my house. It's just really weather resistant. And then make sure you get a metal roof. But 16 by 20 was one that I wanted because I thought I could use a lot of space. However, the minimum that I would suggest is like a 10 by 10. Um, the reason being, if you put a squat rack in here, a barbell is about seven feet. So that gives you about two feet clearance on each side, actually one and a half feet, if we wanna be exact, clearance on each side to get over there and put plates on. I think if it was smaller than 10 by 10, it just feel really tight. So this one's 12 by 20. It's called a utility shed. It's got a nice height, but I think I put pretty much everything you would need in a budget setup. All right, so come on inside. Whoa, 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 whoa. Before you come in, I wanna make sure you dust your feet off on the concrete weight plate. Pay homage. Ah. All right, come on inside. One thing you will maybe notice, I don't know if you can tell this through the beauty of the lens, but this is actually very roomy. And I feel like I've just got more space than I really need. So I'm gonna start in one corner and kind of work my way around. I'm gonna give you some advice on specific equipment that I added for this budget setup. And then I'm gonna give you some alternatives that you can think of based upon whether they're in stock or if it like meets a certain criteria that you're looking for. But I wanna make sure you have an understanding on how to build a budget gym in a shed in your backyard. So let's start over here. So first off in this corner, we have some storage. Now, I'm gonna show you some other storage that we have in here, but I think a big one that you guys should consider are these Gladiator racks. These can be bought at Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever you wanna go, they're made by Whirlpool, but they're a Gladiator system that allows attachments. There's lots of companies out there, Cobalt, Craftsman, and others that make a similar unit. I like this one because the price on these and the versatility on these is much better. I've got them in the regular garage gym. I have also got them out here. But this allows you to put something up on studs and add any sort of attachments to it. So right now I've got a couple chains from Sornex. These are 40 pound each. If you want a cheap chain set, I'd recommend going with Titan Fitness. They're offering the best price. There's also a company called AdvantageRigging.net that you can check out that has really good prices on chains. So I've got chains, I've got a battle rope. I like battle ropes for different shoulder and conditioning workouts. This one's from Hyperwear, it's called the Hyper Rope. You don't have to attach it to anything. I think for this space, it works really well. This one's more expensive. What I would suggest oftentimes is just going to an army surplus store and getting a manila rope. Then we have some bands. I think for like a budget setup, Bands are one of your best versatile items. You can do so much to them. You can add them to a barbell, but then you can add different accessories. So you know, I can put them on the top rafters and do lat pull downs. I can do different accessory movements. I can add accommodating resistance to my lifts. I really like bands. They're cheap, they work well. Go with Elite FTS or Rogue Fitness for a high quality band. I'd avoid the cheap ones that you find on Amazon. After that, we've got a Rogue West Side sled. I think for a home gym, if you've got the space outside where you can do a sled, I would go with a drag sled. This one is super cheap. It's made in the USA, super thick steel. I've dragged my kids on this. I've dragged my dog on this. I've dragged your wife on this. Just kidding, I haven't done that yet. But I've dragged a lot of things on this, including weight. It works really well, stores easily, and it's very cheap. All right, let's move on. This is my conditioning piece, okay? There's a lot of different conditioning items that are out there. And I think for most people, if you're starting a budget gym, I'd go with like a jump rope or something like that. But if you wanna buy a piece, this would probably be one of the first ones I recommend, just because the price point is really good. This is around 750 bucks, shipped to your door, made by Rogue. It's super heavy duty. This is the Echo Bike. We've reviewed it in depth both on the site and on YouTube. I really like it. I think it works well. It doesn't take up a lot of space like a rower. It's compact and it's cheap. If you wanna go with another option, you want a conditioning device, maybe look at something from Concept2 like a skier or a rower. But I think for most people that are just looking for some extra conditioning, some hit, this works great. Now this corner. I think adjustable dumbbells are something that you know, most home gyms should have. There's a variety of options. And if you'd like to see our future review where we talk about the best adjustable dumbbell, make sure you subscribe. We're gonna be talking about that soon. But right now, I just decided to put these in here. These are from a company called Badass. They're pretty good. I don't wanna say they're my favorite because they're not. And I'll talk about that in the future review. But I do think right now it's very hard to get dumbbells and these work well. I think adjustable dumbbell options are perfect for a budget setup. Next. 
You want to increase the versatility, you want to do it cheaply. This is what I would suggest. This is called a kettlebell or a kettle grip. You can get this for like 35 bucks on Amazon. I've had two of these for a while. I've used them for different movements. They just, they're cheap and they work well. The way they work is they wrap around a dumbbell. So if I wanted to do some kettlebell swings, I simply wrap this around the dumbbell. I pull it tight, clip it there, and I now have it where I can do farmer's carries. I can do various swings, two hand swings, everything like that. For a budget setup, having both kettlebells and dumbbells, not a good idea. I think dumbbells are more versatile, so that's why I would suggest adjustable dumbbells. However, if you want to increase the versatility of them, get a $35 kettle grip. It's a great option. Most home gym owners should have this. Next we have, I think, the creme de la creme, the most important part of the gym, and that is the squat rack. It's beautiful. This one is from Sorenex. This is called the off-grid rack. We've done reviews on it. You can take this barbell here, put it up top in the peaks, then you can do pull-ups on it. So it allows you to do pull-ups, with a barbell, which is nice, with an Earl barbell, very smart idea. And then it's got a nice, you know, general setup. They've got hooks back here for adding different band attachments and carabiners. They've also got at the bottom a landmine attachment available. So there's holes basically so you can put a hitch pin in a landmine. Allows you to get a lot of usage. That's what you should be thinking is bang for your buck in a small space. Landmines are perfect for that. Over here, I've got an Amazon Basics bench. This is what I'd recommend for those that are on a very tight budget. This one is sold by Tonal, but I'm gonna be honest with you, it's an Amazon Basics bench. But it's 50 bucks, you get what you pay for. This one works really well. Here we have a Texas Power Bar. I like Texas Power Bar, I think they're good bars. That's one that I would look at for a budget gym, something like that, or a Rogue Ohio Power Bar, or Rogue Bar 2.0, or even like a French Sport Wonder Bar. Those are all good options. Right here, I would go with cheap iron you can get on Craigslist. Right now it's very hard, so if you wanna buy new, these new Rogue deep dish plates, are actually a pretty tremendous value. They're made in the USA, they're actually cheaper than their other plates. Um, they're a good option if you want iron plates brand new. But I would suggest waiting on Craigslist and see if you can get something good. So that's the setup and also we have the beautiful American flag. Now, this is a storage rack called a Gladiator rack. There's other names for it. This one's made by Husky from Home Depot. They're pretty much all the same. I've got three others in the garage. They work really well. They hold about a ton per shelf. One suggestion I would have, if you want to put weights on there, I used to use it as a dumbbell rack. What I would do is get particle board and then put rubber on top. Because as you can see, if you put plates on here, it ends up suppressing these wire racks. Regardless, for storage in a gym, this is your best option. So if you want a budget home gym, you need something to store on it, and you don't want to go out and buy like those expensive storage racks like I've got in my gym, I think this works for most people. This is what I used to have, it's what I first had, and that's what I've got out here. I really like it. Up top, we've got a nice plyo box from Rep Fitness. I like this one because it's priced really well, has a wooden inner shell and then foam outer shell, so it's not gonna compress really hard over time. It's 1624 by 20, however you can get it for a bigger height if you want something bigger, so like a games box where it's actually 30, 24, 20. Great option. Big fan there. Another one is a weight vest. This is from North Gym. This is a decent weight vest. There's nothing absolutely spectacular about it. There's a company called 511 that this is modeled after. For a home gym, a weight vest is a good option because you're gonna be doing a lot of body weight movements, being able to add weight to yourself on pull-ups and things like that. It's gonna be really nice. I would say, recommend a lot of people add some sort of bumper plate. So if you're deadlifting, it's nice to throw some bumpers on the inside and throw iron on the outside. I don't think you need to buy a full set unless you're doing Olympic weightlifting. And really, I don't know if I'd recommend Olympic weightlifting in a shed like this. I think it's fine to drop some deadlifts. I did 315 squats in here just fine. I think overall, like I feel pretty sturdy and solid in here, um, but I'd be a little bit weary dropping, you know, 700 pounds like I clean and jerk um, on the floor. It'd just be kind of hard. So one other thing that I've got in here that I think is budget friendly for you guys that want to rehab or just add a little bit extra posterior work is a reverse hyper. This one I really like from Rogue because it's their Scout Hyper. Similar level quality as the Echo Bike over there. It's one of the cheapest reverse hypers on the market. It's around 350 bucks. Folds up so it doesn't take a ton of space. You can use plates you've already got. I think it's a win-win. I, I see a lot of these in home gyms. I really don't see much of a reason to have a big freaking reverse hyper in most gyms. That one works so well. 
And then lastly, we've got some of the flooring. So this is basically my makeshift deadlift platform with ballistic tiles. It's gonna protect the weight, protect the floor and the foundation. So there you have it. There's my budget shed gym. I think all in all, if you're not including the cost of the shed, which this shed cost me right around four grand, including bringing it to my house, I negotiated on that. I think you could probably negotiate it even a little bit more. And depending on the size, you can get it cheaper, but also depends on your locale. I think not including that, I think you can build a nice budget home gym for around 2000 bucks. So you add in the cost of the shed, you got a sick gym that you can do basically anything you want for around five, six grand. I mean, that's, that's pretty great. I mean, yeah, that's a little bit to chew off the top, but you don't have to do it all at once. You can finance this. Some of this other stuff you can get cheaper. For those of you that are looking to build a gym because gyms are shut down, a shed is a great option. Honestly, I would love to train here all the time. I trained here earlier today, felt great. In the winter, I could close the doors, heat it up. In the summer, get a fan, sweat it out, baby. All right, this is Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.